The EAA Reservoir was designed nearly 20 years ago and will be a vital link in restoring the Everglades and reducing the discharges that are killing our estuaries. But the design we have now is not the one that was originally agreed upon. In 1999, the authors of the Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan designed the reservoir to be 60,000 acres at a depth of six feet. But the reservoir was kept on the back burner for 16 years, despite the fact that it was the second project authorized in SERP. Everything changed in 2016. While the East Coast was getting bombarded with harmful blue-green algae, Joe Negron became the Senate president and the reservoir became his top priority. With guidance from many environmental groups like the Everglades Foundation, he immediately met roadblocks from Big Sugar and their very own South Florida Water Management District. The reservoir needed 30 to 40,000 additional acres of land, so it was the district's job to go out and secure this land. But after several months, all they managed to buy was 500 acres. That's a far cry from 40,000. When asked how they tried to contact these owners, the district said they had posted it on their website. The farmland surrounding the reservoir is not prime land because the rock layer is just a few feet underground and most of the nutrients have been used up in the shallow dirt layer. The state owns land closer to the lake where it is much more productive, so the district should have been swapping this land for land around the reservoir, but that never happened. In 2010, the state bought two large parcels from U.S. Sugar, 18,000 acres of citrus groves located next to the STA-5 and 8,900 acres of sugarcane fields in Palm Beach County. The citrus groves were supposed to be used for expanding the STA, but to this day, they have never been utilized, and U.S. Sugar continues to grow citrus without paying any rent. In 2013, the Florida Wildlife Federation sued the state for extending leases for 30 years on 14,000 acres of state-owned land. These leases were part of a deal in which the district swapped 8,700 acres of their land for only 2,000 acres from Florida Crystals. That's less than one-fourth of the land. Unbelievable. The biggest blunder to date came in 2015 when the state had an option to buy 46,800 acres of land from U.S. Sugar. The citizens of Florida had just passed Amendment 1, which allocated $700 million to buy land for conservation. But despite the avalanche of citizens showing up in support of this purchase, the South Florida Water Management District voted unanimously to kill this option. In 2016, the state owned 4,000 acres of prime land near Belle Glade that was allowing an organization called Pride to farm the land. The state charged Pride an annual fee of just $300. That is seven and a half cents per acre. Furthermore, Pride was using inmates from the local prison to farm the land and paid them a whopping 55 cents per hour. Everyone was against this, even the sugar farmers, because it took jobs away from regular farm workers. That's why Senate Bill 10 specifically named this land to be swapped for land around the reservoir. But once again, it was up to the South Florida Water Management District to negotiate this swap, but the deal never happened. When they were asked why it didn't, their response shocked everyone. They said, and I quote, it was never on the table. Are you kidding me? Probably the biggest blow to the reservoir came wrapped up inside of Senate Bill 10. While Joe Negron was trying to get the support he needed to pass the bill, the legislatures slipped in a provision that would permanently remove eminent domain from ever being used to acquire land for this reservoir. When all the land deals failed, the district began to design a much smaller reservoir and propose a 10,000-acre footprint at 23 feet deep. Many scientists, 207 to be exact, feared that the deeper reservoir would not be able to clean the water good enough to meet the water quality standards. But the district plowed forward with the 10,000-acre footprint. The leases on the land designated for the reservoir were up for renewal in March of 2019. So in the summer of 2018, the district started to renegotiate with sugar farmers behind closed doors, and the public was completely kept in the dark until November 8, two days after the election. The board made it public on its website at 9 p.m. the night before the scheduled meeting that it was going to be voting on extending these leases. 
This blindsided the public and Congressman Brian Mass, the leader of Governor-elect Ron DeSantis' transition team, showed up at the meeting and asked the board not to vote on the leases until the governor-elect could have a chance to look them over. The board ignored this request and voted unanimously to extend the leases. This started an avalanche of bad press and you won't believe what they did next. With mounting pressure coming from all sides, the very next day, the district rented three bulldozers and had them delivered to the A2 site. Then they invited a handful of journalists out to the site and told them that the reason they extended the leases was because that they were going to start work on the reservoir. That's funny, because before this happened, they never once mentioned anything about starting construction. The bulldozers began plowing up newly planted sugarcane fields which obviously caught the farmers by surprise because why would they have planted the fields if they knew they were going to be plowed up? The bulldozers are scraping about one foot of dirt off the land, which is nothing. Whatever they do right now will be grown up and taken over with exotic plants way before the work of the project begins in several years. To make their story even more convincing, the district announced it would be moving 800,000 cubic yards of rock to the newly scraped fields. This rock had cost up to $10 million to move onto these fields, but with no design work done yet, they would only be guessing where to place the rock, and they would have to pay again to move it a second time. This rock is only a few miles away and could be easily kept where it is until the work begins. These piles measure 35 to 40 feet tall and 150 to 200 feet wide. Using fifth grade math to get to 800,000 cubic yards, the piles would have to be a mile long. As you can clearly see, they're not even close to what they say it is. To put this in perspective, it will take more than 40 million cubic yards of rock to build this dike. And the rock that they want to move now will only be enough for 300 yards of the 16 miles of dike. I ask you, does that sound like it's worth spending $10 million to move right now? This is just a dog and pony show that has already wasted taxpayer money and will cause more work in the long run. Plus, the district has always said we need to keep the land in farming so it can bring in extra lease money. I agree, only if we get a fair amount for the lease. The district has many leases with sugar farmers and the most are right around $70 per acre. That doesn't sound like much because it isn't. In the C44 Basin, the district leases land from farmers to do water farming projects. This land is fallow orange groves that is just sitting vacant because citrus greening killed all the trees. The farmers are charging the district $700 per acre to use this land. That is 10 times more than what they want to charge sugar growers to lease the most productive farmland in America. Does that sound fair to you? I believe the biggest blow to Everglades restoration came in the December district meeting, but it hardly got any press. The district was considering terminating the option to buy 153,000 acres of land from U.S. Sugar. The option didn't expire until October of 2020. This land would have been enough to restore the river of grass, or at the very least, it could have been used as a bargaining chip for something else. But even though the option had two more years to go, the board voted unanimously to kill the option. We didn't get a single thing in return. The sad thing is that Big Sugar's influence in negotiating Senate Bill 10 required this lease to be canceled. But then again, SB 10 also required the pride leases to be canceled, but the district refused to terminate those. These leases did not need to be canceled at this time. The reservoir hasn't even been designed or funded yet, and work is still years away. All nine members of the South Florida Water Management District's governing board is owned by Big Sugar and will never vote on the side of Floridians. In my opinion, not only should they be fired, but they should all be charged with treason.